Happy weekend, everyone. Good to see you with me today. Ah, kind of like the romper room, I think they used to call it. Just a the little magnifying glass and say, I see. In fact, I've got one of those and see, see through the mirror. I see, uh, I see Alex out there, and I see, I see Barbara and a uh, few other friends. Oh my, there's Billy over there, and Willie, and uh, oh my. <laughs> I hope you all remember that show, uh, Romper Room. I think that's what it was. And uh, anyway, let's get into the lesson today. I just thought I'd have a little fun with you. Uh, do you think that you still have time? Time to do what, you say? Well, time, time to serve the Lord. Time to even know the Lord. Are you doing His will? Are you in His will? Uh, are you saved? Do you have time? Well, some of us do, some of us don't. Let's go down the end of the lesson here a little bit. In 2 Corinthians 6, verse 17 and 18, tells us, he, he tells us to come out from among them. Among who? Among the, the wicked, the evilness. And do not touch what is unclean. And I will receive you, the Lord says. I will be a father to you. And you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Now, who doesn't want that? I do. We all do. Those who believe in the Lord. Now, there are those who don't, but uh, that's, they're going to have to pay the price. Uh, time's running out. There is a countdown for each of us, and uh, we need to get involved in that uh, things with the Lord before the time runs out, because time is getting shorter every day, every day. Some of us have less time than others. We know that. Uh, we don't even know if we'll even see tomorrow. Time goes that fast. We don't know. And so some things are too late in our life, you know, to, to make a decision on. And we don't want to be in that position. Uh, when we see smoke in a house, in our kitchen, uh, it's too late to go out and buy a fire extinguisher. Uh, when your health is, goes bad, it's too late to buy insurance. So there's some things that we can be late on. And as, as we get older, we say, well, I, I wish I had taken better care of myself. You know, we seem to realize those bad choices that we make when it's too late. And we procrastinate, I guess, too much. And we prolong, we, do, we just decide, well, I can do it later. But later may never come. It uh, may end for us, and we don't know. And that's what God's talking about in His Word is, are you right with the Lord? And that's a serious question. You know, it's not too late yet. We know that because you're listening to me. <laughs> uh, we're still here. So why take a chance? Most people have a Bible, but do they take time to read it and study it? You know, many church members are concerned for other souls, but do they consider their own souls themselves? The, the longer you ignore something that you really need to do, the easier it is to keep ignoring it. So why don't we do it? It's our will, isn't it? We don't want to do God's will. We want to do our will. Our will is, is important, and that's, that's what we want. And... Uh, Let's go to Matthew's two, uh, no, Matthew 7, 24. I want to get into that right quick. It says, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts upon them may be compared to a wise man. Now, who doesn't want to be a wise man? Who, who built his house upon the rock, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and burst against that house, and, and yet it did not fall or had been founded upon a rock. Now we know what the rock is and what he's talking about. He's talking about the rock, Jesus Christ himself, the cornerstone. Are you doing God's will? Matthew 7, 26 and 27. 
And anyone who hears these words of mine and does not act upon them will be like a foolish man who built his house upon the sand and the rain descended <laughs> and the floods came and the winds blew and burst against the house and it fell and great was its fall. We don't want to accept that. We don't want to be in that position. Especially when it comes to our soul. It can be too late for some. And it has been, we know. Like when you, the operation begins, it's too late to, to take vitamin pills or eat good food to keep from getting sick. When the battle begins, it's too late to train the troops. We see that in wars everywhere. When the whistle blows, it's too late to, to, to teach a game plan. When the flood waters rise, it's too late to, to find a rock foundation. So when Satan attacks, only those who have put on the whole armor can resist. And that's why we need the whole armor of God upon us, so we can combat this, this thing that's coming at us, the end of our time. You know, we know how to preserve things. We know how to take care of ourselves. Why don't we do it? Eating right and living a healthy lifestyle helps prevent sickness and disease. We learn this stuff all the time. It teaches us, the doctors teach us, the TV teaches us. Everybody knows that just walking a, a mile a day could improve your health. But who does it? Not many, that's for sure. Buying a fire extinguisher, extinguisher before a problem is wise. So you'll be prepared if a fire happens. I said before, too late after the fire started to go out and buy one. When the Lord comes, it's too late. You can't make a decision then. Learning our Bible is the best thing for our soul. Yet few of us actually do it. We have a war out there. Satan is attacking us 24-7, 365 days a year, well, every day. And he doesn't give up. Are you taking this battle seriously? I hope you are. Because many don't. That's why we need to, to wear God's armor every day. Every day. Why do we actually need it? Well, in Ephesians 6 tells us, verse 10 through 13, so we can be strong in the Lord and, and in the strength of His might. We can't do it on our own. So that, that we may be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. So we'll recognize Him. And be able to, to dodge it. Because our struggle is not against flesh and blood. So we can resist the evil day and stand firm in our faith to God. It's God's truth wrapped around us is what it is. Putting God's righteousness in the forefront of our life. It's being prepared. Studying the gospel. By knowing it and living it, in other words, being doers of the word, the shield of faith is our protection. The helmet of salvation is our hope. And the sword of the Spirit is the Bible and prayer. I'm ready. Are you? Don't run out the clock. Make sure that you do it. Today is the day of salvation, the Lord says. It's today. You may not have it tomorrow. 
We need to memorize verses in the Bible now. We need to be studying it. So we'll have it when we need it. Worship God today and every day. And when you need that strength, <laughs> you won't have time to develop it. What will I say? Repent of sin now. Get close to God. When Christ comes, you won't have time. It happens in a flash. Check for broken connections with God now. In other words, are you in touch with God? Because that's your funeral. It's, it's, you won't have time. <laughs> it's too late. Get to know Him today. Get to know Jesus now. Don't be almost persuaded and lost. Obey the Lord and be saved. Then you'll be prepared when He comes again. Simple directions God gives us. We need to take them seriously. Our soul is at stake. Remember, you're trading this short life that we have here today for a wonderful, eternal life. That's what we have hopes for. What God has promised us. We don't always listen, do we? We don't always obey, do we? We don't always believe. We doubt. Seriousness goes out the window. Well, I want to study. I want to know. But yet I never take time to do it. I give up in the middle of my studies. The world pulls me back into it. I can't change. All these are lies from the devil. God has the only truth. And it's in His Word. It's not scattered out across the world. We put the Word in our hands now, called the Bible. God's Word from His messengers, from those anointed to write it. There was no other anointed to write. There's no hitting scripture out there for you to compare against God's Word and say, oh, this is God's missing Word. Satan uses things like that to persuade you to lead you astray, to cause you to doubt God's holy word in the beginning. Sure, there's differences in translations. Don't get lost in that because there's only one decipher of God's word, and that's the Holy Ghost to give you the understanding. You might find a word twisted or a definition twisted. The Lord will straighten it out in your life. And it will not go against any other thing in the Bible at all. You are God's child and He will lead you and guide you. And it won't be astray either. He'll keep you on the straight and narrow path. And that path is full of love, compassion, freedom. Everything that you need to joy, patience, the long-suffering, and I'm talking the fruit of the Spirit. It all comes from one source, our Heavenly Father. Let's give Him the glory today and every day in our life. And If you don't know the Lord yet, please, I plead with you to, to bow your head and, and talk to God and ask Him for guidance, forgiveness, 
Start reading his word and believe in him. Let him show you, for he will. And I pray this would happen in your life today. For he is coming and time is short. And like I said at the beginning, it's shorter for some more than others. Take care this week. See you next week. May God bless you and restore your faith. In Jesus' name, amen.